started with, again, this, the, uh, the agenda and the housekeeping items and stuff like that. Um, so everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Jacob Michaels. I am the Director of Finance and Operations for the World Federation of Youth Clubs. We've got a number of WFYC staff members joining us in the room today as well. Uh, for those who are familiar with our, our webcasts and, you know, for example, our annual conference that just wrapped a few weeks ago, you'll notice uh, Don Nagy is joining us, as well as Abby LeMay. We've got Tim Richardson, and I know that Glenn is on the call as well. Um, so welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for the, the webcast this month. Universal, so they relate. Specific, so they care and other storytelling tips. And we wanted to really start off the year strong after our conference with inviting back one of our most favorite friends and speakers, Alice Fairfax. Uh, Alice is, has uh, recently shared with us at our annual conference just a few weeks ago, uh, kind of a, a shorter, maybe more abridged version of her expertise in storytelling. And so we're happy to invite her back for a, a more longer form conversation. And again, it's, it's going to be very kind of informal and conversational. We were, um, we received some questions ahead of time and some follow up from the conference. So we will uh, have some conversations to guide us during our time together. And of course, there will be an open format Q&A at the end. Um, so again, just standard housekeeping items. Uh, this session is being recorded, so smile, uh, wave if you want. Uh, and again, the reason that we recorded it is so that we could share it on YouTube for viewing at a later date. So that again, any of our affiliates that uh, might not be able to join us right now are still getting the benefit of participating in this wonderful webcast session. Uh, so we will be sharing the links and everything like that uh, after it has been finalized and recorded and all of that. Uh, we do ask that if everyone can uh, remain on mute for most of the time, unless they are maybe asking a question or engaged in conversation, um, just so that there's, uh, you know, background noise. And, and certainly if I were at my house, there would be cats. So uh, if you could mute, that would be wonderful. Thank you so much. And uh, also for the best view, you can click on view and speaker view or side by side speaker view. And that just kind of keeps the, uh, the recording, I guess, on both myself and our wonderful guest, Alice. And uh, also it'll allow you to view the slides and the stuff that will be kind of uh, guiding our discussion today. So I guess without further ado, uh, I'll kick it over just a, a brief, well, before, I'm sorry, before I kick it over to Alice, just a brief um, introduction, you know, again, my name is Jacob. I work for the World Federation of Youth Clubs. I'm sure, you know, most of us in the room are affiliates or, you know, are familiar with the organization, but just in case we have any uh, folks in the room that are joining us from outside of our affiliate network, uh, the World Federation of Youth Clubs, we are an international nonprofit that works with boots on the ground, uh, youth clubs, in, you know, I think we're up to 36 countries now. Uh, we've got over 75 partners and we're so glad to be just doing the work that we're doing, uh, helping you all to best serve your youth. Um, and we've, uh, we've got some resources that we could share with you. These resources include this webcast that we're on and the annual conference that was wrapped just a few weeks ago. And again, that's where we were all introduced to Alice. Uh, so again, thank you so much for, for joining us. And we are working to continue to build a robust resource library for all of our affiliates uh, because you know, we want to be able to provide the most value we can to you all. And uh, again, just help you all do the wonderful work that you're doing. Um, so again, just we want to do a quick chat check-in. Uh, the chat will be what we use to make our introductions, say hi, uh, and also share your questions. So if you want to give it a test drive right now, our chat check-in engagement today, what is the name of your favorite childhood story or character? Type the answer in the chat. 
Uh, I'm going to break the rules and not type it in the chat. I'm just going to say it since I have the microphone. Uh, favorite childhood story? Probably The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. I read the books, you know, I've seen the movies, and I've actually started listening to the books uh, on audiobooks through my library lately. And, uh, you know, if my wife gets in the car with me and I immediately turn it on and the Bluetooth picks up and it's just, and Bilbo went to the bubble and she's like, yeah, you're such a nerd. So, you know, that's my favorite childhood story. And apparently as a 33 year old man, still love it. And I think that's what makes a good story, right? It's you love it as a kid and you love it as an adult. What do we got? The Little Prince. Winnie the Pooh, Superman, Swiss Family Robinson. That was my mom's favorite childhood book. <clears throat> um, we've got a uh, Marquita La Linda and Marquita La Fea. That sounds like a good story. We've got Beatrix Potter, Three Little Pigs. That's a great story. Uh, Pinocchio as well, another good story. Good stuff. Well, you know, speaking of, I feel like Pinocchio is a good uh, segue into our guest today uh, because it's a, a well-known Disney story. And of course, yeah. World Federation being based in Orlando, Florida, you know, our, our biggest claim to fame, of course, is the world of Disney. And I guess without further ado, um, can I kick it over to our guest today, Alice Fairfax, for a, a brief introduction from her. Well, hi, everybody. I'm so excited to be with you again. Hi, hi, hi. And thank you so much for being here. I'm excited to just kind of re-engage with you a little bit about our story principles and to answer any questions that you have um, and just have a great conversation with Jacob. Um, so I am known as the story maven. Um, and that's because I help nonprofits and small business leaders conquer the blank page. That's really what I help, help you do. So when you sit down to figure out that email or write that pitch or get up and speak, there's that moment of, oh, what am I going to say? How am I going to say it? Um, and so that's what I'm here to help you to do is to conquer that blank page. Um, we want to give you the tools that help you to tell your story well. Um, so in my session, um, which you can access online now, I believe, um, I shared some stories with you. Um, but I thought it would be fun. Um, Jacob and I have worked together before. Um, at an arts organization and um, we shared a lot of stories, but I, I wanted to hear a little story from Jacob this morning to kick us off um, about his experiences. So Jacob, would you share a story to kick us off? I will, uh, I'm, you know, I'm doing my best. This was my homework in preparation uh, for this webcast. And, you know, the big takeaway from Alice's presentation uh, at the conference was the, the mantra, right? Universal, so they relate, and specific, so they care. Um, so this is my story. And it's about not being afraid to look dumb because most of the time, the only person that thinks you look dumb is you, right? And so I'd like to tell a story about you know 10 years ago when I was living in Kofaradua, Ghana. I was doing an international development sort of trip with the Canadian NGO Youth Challenge International. And in this part of the country, the tap water, the running water was, you know, it was suggested to not be drunk by Westerners that weren't maybe used to, to drinking it. And so all of the drinking water had to be purchased in these little plastic bags, water sachets, and they would come in about, I think, 40 or 50 packs. And they weighed about probably 30 or 40 pounds a piece. Like they weren't, they weren't light. And so two, three times a week, I would have to walk into town, get my water sachets and bring them back to the hostel where I was staying at the local YMCA. And, you know, it was, it was probably a mile walk. It was long, it was hot. My forearms would get tired from trudging these heavy bags back. And, you know, I was doing this for a while. And I remember one of the trips, I, you know, I'm carrying these things in my hand and I, I walked past a little girl who was selling these same sachets individually. And she's got hers on her head. Both of her hands are free. 
she's walking, she's, you know, making deals, collecting money, talking to people. And I'm sitting there sweating and out of breath. And, I, you know, I see this little girl and she just looks at me like, they're heavy. Why are you carrying them? And, and you know, I, it dawned on me that I just, I didn't want to, you know, because maybe in America, we don't carry things on our heads. I didn't want to look silly. I don't know. But I just, I'll never forget the look this girl gave me. Like, you're not doing it right, man. And so I put them on my head and, you know, I, I couldn't balance. I didn't have the balance or the practice to, you know, be free-handed with it. But I put them on my head and I would walk and hold them. And it made every trip so much easier for the rest of my time in the country. And so I, I'll never see that little girl again, probably. But thank you to her for making my trips so much easier. Uh, and it turns out that I didn't look stupid. No one ever said, like, oh, look at this guy with his bag. Like, no, nobody ever said anything to me. And uh, it turns out it was way easier that way. So don't be afraid to look stupid because you probably don't. <laughs> Perfect. Just beautiful. Thank you so much, Jacob. So that, that helps us uh, go back to our story maven, story mantra. Um, so the story mantra, if we could put that up, um, it's the topic of our conversation today. But every story to be great and to really connect needs to be universal so they relate, specific so they care, and they being the audience. Um, so Jacob just did that for us. He just showed us what that looks like and what that feels like. Because I, I haven't been on a road in Ghana carrying water sachets. Um, and maybe some of you have been in a similar situation, but most of us probably not. Um, but have I been in a situation where I needed to figure something out, right? I needed to overcome a situation. Um, have I been in a situation where I felt kind of out of, out of place, like I didn't fit in and I didn't know how to fit in? Have I been in a situation where I've learned something from somebody I didn't expect to? So those are all those universal things that I can relate to, right? And then he used the specifics and gave us those specifics so that we could start seeing this picture in our mind's eye, right? Could you see the road that he was walking on? Could you see the sweat on his arms? And like, I, could, I was imagining dust, right? Um, as I'm thinking of Ghana. And then I'm, could you see the little girl? Jacob said at the end of his story, I'll never see this little girl again. Well, we'll all see her. We, we have all imagined her now, right? Um, so we can all see her. We see that water on her head and she's just so relaxed and she's like a little thing and Jacob's just a big guy sweating along. So we see that whole picture and that made us care and that made us interested. Um, and, and by painting the picture ourselves, then that helped us to engage on a deeper level um, with that story. So the moral of the story that Jacob wanted to share with us we're be better able to um, understand and relate to and connect to um, because he used those two principles, universal so we relate and specific so we care. Um, so Jacob, thank you so much for doing that um, and sharing that principle with us. One of the really great things about that, and Jacob, if there's any questions that you have about that principle, um, I, was, I wanna get into the specifics a little bit more there. Um, but do you, did you have any thoughts or questions on that? Not necessarily about the principle, uh, but I did, you know, as I was coming up with this story, uh, it actually kind of naturally segues into our, our next section here. Um, so I'll kick that back over to you. But I wanted to, you know, try to use as much description as possible to talk about the, the heaviness of the labor and the sweat and just what I saw, what I felt, what I probably smelled like being sweaty and, and doing it the hard way, you know? Um, so that's, that's a sense that I forgot, right? The sense of smell there. Uh, but how are the five senses so important to storytelling and how do they help us be universal and specific? So the five senses are where you're really gonna dig into the, the specifics. That's where you're gonna find 
um, the raw material for your stories. So you've got, um, we talked about that universal, finding that big theme and driving the theme up as high as you can go. So for instance, in Jacob's story, uh, I wrote down belonging. Like to me, that was really a, a key thing. You could, he could have put, we could have started, you remember we talked about Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs. We could have put that story as um, a story of survival. He needed water, right? Um, but he started talking about how he felt and how, how he was trying to get this water and, and this little girl and how easy it was for her and how she looked. Um, so then that became that sense of belonging for me. Um, and that desire to belong, that desire to fit in, that um, and when he talked about not being stupid, like not not looking stupid, like oh, I don't want to be, I don't want to be the odd one out, you know, I want to be part of the community, and that is such a key driver for all of us. We all long for that. So um, thinking about those big, big um, universal themes that we can latch onto that make the story flow. Um, and then coloring it with the five senses. So that's where you're gonna go. If you think about, like if you were painting a picture, you know, you'd have your artist palette and all your different colors there. Those five senses is your palette. That's what you are gonna use to design that story and paint that story in. So taste, touch, smell, sight, uh, and sound. And under, under, you don't have to give all of those things. That's kind of the fun part is of the puzzle of storytelling is um, kind of deciding, ooh, which parts of this am I gonna use, right? Like if we're making a meal, like which spices am I gonna, am I gonna use that's really gonna make this stand out? Because if I use all of them, it'll taste like mush, right? It won't it'll taste like nothing. Um, so think about, really get in there and make lists about the specifics. So for instance, on touch, I think a lot about the textures, right? Um, as Jacob was describing those water, oh, they're water sachets. Okay, that was a really interesting word. So then I started to see, like, what does that bag look like, right? I'm starting to imagine it in my mind and that's keeping my mind engaged. Um, Sight colors are really important. Whenever you can bring a color in, that really, really helps. Seeing the specifics, seeing that little girl um, and that she was, oh, her arms were free and she was doing, she was making deals, right? Okay, so that's what he was seeing. And so now we were seeing, we had an image of her and I'm painting the picture of what she's wearing and how she's interacting with people. Um, so you're really diving into those specifics. That's going to be that palette that helps you um, create that story that's really unique and unique to you. And it's going to make people sit up and take notice. And that's really um, a really key element of the, of the storytelling. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit too about the hero's journey. Um, we we've and, talked a little bit about that before. But yeah, yeah, please, um, please continue. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we talked about the hero's journey uh, as being a structure for um, story. And that is a narrative structure for story. Um, we talk about, but what I really want you to think about when you're telling a story is that every character in a story has needs and every character in a story has wants. And so I think about this in terms of being an actor and being a performer, and maybe some of you have had some experience uh, doing drama in your youth or probably in your youth clubs, you're uh, doing, uh, using theater and theater games uh, as things to do and ways to engage people. So as an actor, every single character in a play, in a movie, in a story has a want and a need, right? Even the smallest character, the character that walks on and says one line and says, hey, a storm's coming, let's all run. The character that says that, if, if the actor playing that character just walks on and does their line, it has no power to it. As an actor, you have to decide, oh, that character really, really wants, they want everyone to be safe. So then when they come in, hey, everyone, there's a storm, right? They have all of this power behind them. If their only want is, oh, I, I need to say this line and then go back and take my break, 
That is not a good enough want or a need, right? Um, so even like, uh, uh, like being in this conversation today, I have wants and I have needs. Each one of you has wants and you have needs. Um, so if we can go to that next slide, I wanna talk to you about how to figure out, when you figure out the want and the need of the characters in your story, and more specifically, I want us to talk about some of the questions we had are about your audience. I want you to be thinking about the wants and the needs of your audience as well, because that will help you tell a great story. So our need, a character's need is usually immediate, it's visual, it can, and that's what connects to our specifics part of our story mantra. The want is that higher thing. It's that aspirational visionary and it connects to our universal category in that story mantra. So for instance, right here in this session, what I want, I want to be a great speaker. I want to be able to share my expertise. I want to connect with a global community and help you make an impact. That's what I want. What I need is for my internet to be working today. <laughs> I need to have my notes and, and, and be able to answer the questions. I need to have my water near me because you know it's Florida and we're all about the allergies here. So do you see the difference there? My want, in order to achieve that high want of being an effective and impactful speaker, I also have to meet my needs. I have to think about those needs. And so that's really important as you're looking at um, as you're looking at your story. But really, this is going to come into play as you look at your audience. What do they want? What do they need? And that's so, how you can design your story. Go ahead, Jacob. Would it be fair? So I, you know, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm the host, but I'm also the student in this session as well. So for my story, my need was. The water i needed to have water to drink yeah and i needed to go get the water but as you said my wants were i didn't want to look silly and you know I, I i always thought that i didn't want to look silly but when you said i was really yearning for a sense of belonging that's really what this story was about ah. i wanted to just be like everyone else in the community that had to go get their water and I didn't want to stick out and not be a part of the community. Right. And, right. Um, you know, that's, that's the story. Uh, that's the power that story has. You know, sometimes you think you're talking about one thing, but you're really talking about something that's much more deep. And um, that was, so thank you for pointing that out. You know, I've, I've told this story a million times. It's been in my head for a decade. And today is the day that I found out what that story was really about. You're deeper. It's so. kind of like therapy. Storytelling is kind of like therapy because you find that deep want um, that you are trying to meet in your own life. And, and yeah, usually there is that really higher want in there. What is that, what is that want? Um, and, and that really does, it, it's those drivers, our intentions. Um, behind the story that we want. Um, so be thinking about, and we'll, we're gonna talk about that a little bit more as we go into some of the questions that have already been given to us, um, but be thinking about that in terms of your audience because each member of your audience has a want and they have a need, right? And uh, that's kind of the challenge and the fun part for all of us in nonprofits is, is that we have several different audiences um, and so we're going to talk about that uh, in just a second. I want to move into this next section of, of our storytelling um, techniques here, some tools, is action verbs. Um, and we didn't dive into this too much in our session, um, but I wanted to give you this picture to add on to as you're looking at that. You've, so now you've kind of built this structure for your story. You've got maybe a list of universal wants, um, universal themes that uh, everyone can relate to. And then you've got this list of specifics of colors and sights and sounds and smells and tastes and things that you could touch. And uh, you, you've made a little list of those things. So now you've kind of got all of these lists. How do I put this together and make a story? 
Well, the next list I want to encourage you to make is action verbs. There's a, um, there's a rule in writing and in storytelling. And that rule is show, don't tell. And this is a very challenging rule. This is very, very hard to do. <laughs> it's very hard as a writer. It's very hard as an actor um, because we wanna tell, we wanna explain everything. We want everybody to get all of the total explanation. But what we really wanna do, if we really wanna engage people in a story is we want to show them, not tell them. So the difference uh, would be, if I'm going to tell you about something. So how many times have you heard a story from, from in a nonprofit, certainly in a club setting, um, talking to a donor, and the story goes something like this. Well, I, I wanna tell you about um, a young man that was at our club. I wanna tell you this story about, about Jackson. And uh, he came to our club when he was 14 and he was really struggling inside. Um, but on the outside, he really projected all of this confidence. So that is a story about Jackson, right? And I am telling that to you. I am giving you information. If we showed that and turned it into a story, a real story, the way you'd start that would be Jackson walked into the lobby of our club and he had his red shirt on and he had his hat, baseball hat on backwards and his backpack over his back that was really heavy with books. And he looked like he had it all together, but inside he was struggling. Show, don't tell. Which is the same story, it's the same information, but now we've t we're telling a story instead of telling about something. And part of the way we do that is action verbs. He walked, he looked, he struggled. So you're gonna take those three lists, that universal theme, couple of those specifics, a red shirt, a baseball cap, a backpack, a lobby, and then you're gonna add some action verbs to it. And when you put all of this together, that man, you're starting to weave that story together. It's just getting much easier. Is it getting much easier? <laughs> Am I scaring you or is it getting much easier? When you, you know, bring those three elements together, um, it's, this is why I say I, I am helping you. I wanna help you to conquer the blank page because you don't start with a blank page and start, okay, once upon a time, you're gonna start, you take that blank page, you're gonna write your list of universal things, two or three, right? Then you're gonna write your list of specifics. Then you're gonna write down some action verbs. And then that is to actually write that story. It'll be easy, it's right there for you, right? Does that make sense, Jacob? It sure does. And what's, what's resonating for me is, you know, I know that the work that World Federation of Youth Clubs does is important. Our affiliates know, I know that the work they do with their youth is important. We already know this. And so we can, I guess, taking the easy way out, taking it for granted that other people know that the work we do is important. Mm -hmm. And so it's easy for us to just tell about the work that we do because we're assuming that our audience also knows, like we know, that the work we do is important. And unfortunately, that's not always the case. So like, we really do need to make the effort to show why it's important. And, you know, I, I think oh. I've certainly in my career have, have fallen into that trap of taking it for granted and, and not doing the best job of telling a story because I'm telling about the work that we do. I'm not showing you the work that we do. I'm not showing you the stories of the, the youth that are, you know, the, like the Promise Awards recipients, you know, these, these are stories that are showing us, not telling us. And you know, I, I think that if we can all be conscious of that, there's a storyteller inside of all of us. If we just make the effort to actually tell the story and, and not just assume that other people know the story like we know it. 
and I, I want to encourage each of you on this too of, about what Jacob is saying. It is, it is actually hard to tell a story. It is a vulnerable thing. You are putting yourself out there because when you tell somebody about something, it feels like you have a little bit more control. Well, I'm going to tell them about this. I've got my 12 data points and I'm going to go down my data points here. Um, and I'm going to tell them about that. There, it feels like you've got a little bit of protection between you and your audience. And especially when you are in a situation where you are asking for a donation, right? That can feel very, very vulnerable. Um, but the truth is when you share that story, when you show somebody something, you are opening that door, opening that door to that vulnerable connection between two people. And so them getting connected with you, is just a much higher chance of that. Um, and so uh, let, let's go into some of these questions um, that were already sent in because I think this will highlight uh, what we're talking about, but, but really honor yourself. It is vulnerable. It actually is hard to tell a story. It is easier to bring up a chart and say, we served this many and then this impacted and we saw 38% growth in this and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, it feels a little safer. It is. Um, so let's, let's talk about then some of the audience questions because yes. that's where that's where you have to create the story instead of tell about, you know, show us. Uh, one of the questions that came in, how can I better communicate big ideas effectively? Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's big things that we're doing that can take a lot of words and we could write a five page paper about everything, but sometimes you only have a tweet that you can get out. Yep. So how can we better communicate big ideas effectively and maybe in shorter, more digestible fashion? Oh, awesome. Um, so this is a great question. All the questions that you sent in were so great. So thank you all. Um, so how can I better communicate big ideas effectively? You're going to hone in on that story mantra. You're really going to hone in on making it universal so they relate and specific so they care. That is really going to help you with that big idea. And the other uh, technique that I wanna share with you is something called a controlling idea. The controlling idea is a screenwriter technique um, and it basically just gets you focused. So what is the controlling idea of this particular story? So Jacob did a great job with the controlling idea. You did all these things so well, Jacob, and you didn't even know. And <laughs> now you're learning. Um, so the controlling idea, he said it up front. I, I didn't want to look stupid. This is a story about not wanting to look stupid. That was the controlling idea. So any detail in his story that didn't match that idea had to go. He could have talked about um, a conversation that he had with the young girl. He could have talked about um, the hostel that he was living in and told us more about that. He could have talked more about the work that he was doing. What was he doing there? There's more things that we want to know. That's a story for a different day. The controlling idea was I didn't want to look stupid. And so every single element, every single detail that he used went up under that controlling idea. Some In high school English, you would have called it your theme, right? Um, your subject <laughs> sentence, your subject sentence, okay? Um, so you want to find that controlling idea. This is what the story is going to be about. This is what this big idea is that we're going to communicate. Now, here's the good news. Never throw anything out. Because in your drafts of writing out, how do I communicate about this big idea? Maybe there's three or four different stories that you could tell. Maybe there's three or four different ways you could tell it. I have a file on my computer called what I call mulch, like mulch, like uh, compost for your garden, <laughs> right? Yes, okay, <laughs> you got it. Um, and so anything that doesn't fit, I put in the mulch file because it's gonna sit there and it's gonna seep in all of the environment and it's just gonna sit there. And when I need it, when I need a different perspective or a different idea or a different example, 
I'm going to go to that file and find it. I never feel bad about cutting anything out of a story because I, it will come back around. It will come back around. But when you hone in and focus in on that one thing that you want to tell, that's how you can kind of break that big idea into the one idea that you want to share. Does that help? It's super helpful. And I really like the mulch analogy. I have a mulch pet at my house. So, <laughs> um, Very important. I see actually Astrid has a hand raised. Do you want to unmute yourself and, and share a question? Sure. Thank you so much, both of you, for all this information. So uh, in my case, I'm not so involved with individual donors as I am a grant writer. And grant proposals tend to be very data heavy and mm -hmm. uh, program description heavy. However, I've been very interested in storytelling. And one of the things I, I tried was to like, for example, uh, a few months ago, I was writing a proposal for a STEM program for little kids to do like very simple experiments to get involved with sciences. And I actually started the program description with a recipe. I was like, what do you get if you mix this and this and this? You get ink. And I put ink in color. And my question is like, you know, does all the storytelling has to do with a story of a success of an individual or, or is what I did valid as well? Oh, it sounds great. Yeah. It sounds know. so great, Astrid. You, you, you gave a, somebody a picture, you, you took a, a little different perspective and, and got them engaged. And for me, that's the really key thing about your data points because your data points are important. Um, so I tell a story a lot of working with, um, a food bank and it's a food bank in um, North Florida and they serve uh, like this whole county, three, three county regions, I believe. Um, and so the, the executive director was trying to tell me a story about their data, like how many people they served, right? How many thousands of people they served with their food bank. Um, they were in 15 locations, da, 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 da. Um, and so I finally just said to her, tell me, tell me a story from your day. What happens? Tell me what happens. So she tells this incredible story about mm, this truck that had two tons of potatoes in it that went to its Walmart to drop off, uh, drop off the potatoes, but he was 10 hours late. He was supposed to be there at 10 in the morning. He got there at 10 at night. The Walmart didn't need the potatoes anymore, didn't have room for them anymore. So the general manager called her, the executive director of the food bank and said, the truck with two million, with two tons of potatoes is headed to a rest stop, go meet them there. So she calls everyone she knows that's on her staff, U-Hauls, SUVs, pickup trucks. She had 25 different people in trucks, their home vans, you know, like <laughs> get the kids toys out of the back and take this van, um, met them at the rest stop filled up these 25 trucks and then went to 15 different locations. Okay, that is data that she could have presented on a chart, right? But she told it in a story. We could see, oh, 25 trucks going to 15 different locations. Now I get it. So when you can take your data, so we serve, we have 15 locations. We serve over 2,000 people. We have an impact radius of da, 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 da. Get all your data. Now, what are some stories where you can illustrate that? How can you illustrate that? And by doing that recipe, you illustrated the wants and the needs that are going on um, in that program. Yeah, I was sure hoping that, that they said, gee, I want to go there and do ink. Right. Yeah, I'm doing right. That's what you, want. Yeah. you want them to get engaged mm -hmm. um one of the questions too we was uh talking thank about, you thank you thank you was about the emotional connection how do we make that emotional connection mm -hmm. with the audience and it really is in those specifics when you can find ways if you just tell those data points in those big ways which is great you know what's great about telling a story is you can illustrate a story 
So Jacob could have given us an illustration about, he could have shared this story about the water sachets being 30 pounds and him walking a mile, all data points, all data points, right? But he shared it in a story. He could follow up with a chart that said, while I was in Ghana working with this organization, these are the things, these are the things that we were working on. We were working on getting water to this many people and that it, he could have given us a chart after he engaged us with that story and opened up those data points. Alex, do, you, do you think it's fair to say, you know, because I, I've written grants before and because of our program, 40% of our youth displayed a higher uh, aptitude for X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. they, they tested more highly on their uh, science tests, whatever. Is it fair to maybe categorize these data points as micro controlling ideas? So if, if, the, if the data point is the controlling idea that we're telling about, we're telling about 40% of our youth are better because of it. And then we share the story and we show. Is that kind of a, a good understanding? I'm getting chills here. Okay. Your kids just nailing it. Yeah. So that, okay, that data point becomes your controlling idea. We're going to tell a story about this and then we are going to focus in on this. And you could probably tell, I mean, you probably have 10 stories under that particular data point. So I do wanna highlight one question that I think will help with this thought. Okay. Um, uh, there was a question about three different audiences. Did you see that question? I did, I saw um, when telling my organization's story to prospective supporter, partner, or youth, what are the most important points to share? Is that the one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So here's the um, challenge that all nonprofits face. We have different audiences. You know, when you're in marketing and in business, they talk a lot about, we got to find our target audience, right? So you're really looking for one target audience to sell your product to, right? The people that are going to use, you know, this particular toothpaste are people that are in need of this, right? Um, so, but we have three different audiences. So in that one, there was a prospective supporter, donor, there was a partner and a youth, right? So you have to, remember how to tell you have one story to tell the story of your organization the story of and that is a tone um what we do how we serve how we meet the needs but telling that to each of those different audiences you're not going to change the story you're not going to change even the details what you want to think about is the wants and needs of each of those different people right so the youth, the participant, those that we serve have a particular want and a particular need, right? That is different than the donor, the donor's want and the donor's need. And you need to think about that. Um, it's a really, really challenging one for all of us and our partner, especially when we think about our donors. I really don't want you to be afraid of, you know, they want and need, they have money and support that they have to give they need to give that so they want to do that but if you so they need okay I have this grant that I have to fulfill by x date right that is a need but their want impact the community change the face of their community make sure the next generation has resources that they didn't have they have a want that you can speak into. And when you shape your story to speak into that want that they have, boy, you'll re really connect with them. You'll take those data points and really connect with, this is the reason there's 40% is because we do these things. There's a 40% change and it makes a difference in our community in this way. Can you imagine 40% of the youth getting better grades? What does that do for a city? What does that do for a neighborhood? It's huge, right? Mm -hmm. So think through that. Um, yeah, and you know, what I'm also hearing is with each audience member, with each different audience, think about how you can engage them in participation. And, and when we're tapping into their wants and their needs, yeah. you know, if, if it's a youth, the youth 
wants to do 40% better on their testing. The donor wants to know when they donate money, how can they be part of the solution? Yeah. And of course, the partner wants to know how can they be involved? You know, maybe they're volunteers. How can they get involved to help, you know, do the good work that you're doing? So um, when you're addressing your audience, always, you know, just like we want to show, not tell, we want to show them how they can be a part of that and kind of include them in the story. Don't just say, you know, don't make it seem like it's another thing. Make it seem like it's us doing it as well. Yeah, beautiful. It's inviting them into the story. Yeah. Invite them into the story. So Absolutely. I see Lir Lyris has a, a question here that she's typed in. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. The world has changed with the pandemic. Um, uh, tell me about this story. Do you have changed the way that you tell stories? For example, avoid talking about being afraid um, or some recommendations for young people. Um, do you want, can you come off mute, Lyris? And are you able to tell me a little bit more about this question? I think that for me, the difference in how we tell stories about the pandemic <clears throat> is we are more aware of people's wants and needs than we have ever been, right? Um, so that actually helps us in telling our stories because we can talk about what is really going on. And especially for our young people, boy, they have a lot of wants and needs that have come to the surface that maybe we didn't know about before, maybe we didn't think about because we didn't need to know about them. They were in school, they were doing fine, but it has made it, people have been able to articulate their wants and their needs much more clearly um, because of this pandemic because they were in more need. I mean, just in my own house, my son has had struggled so much with his communication and finding a new way to communicate and finding a new way to get connected. These are really clear wants and needs. Um, and the organizations that I work with, I work with a lot of people with special needs because my son has autism. And so working with, we have, our needs are so much clearer to the rest of the world right now because everybody lost skills. And so again, think about those. What, what, is the, what is the importance of youth clubs? It's belonging, it's community, it's connection. And those things take people to the next level. It's not just, it's not World Federation youth tutoring, right? It's not, oh, we're just gonna help people do better in school. We're gonna give them some worksheets or some training. It's a club. We're gonna make them feel connected. We're gonna make them feel important. We're, and while we're doing that, we're gonna give them tools and skills that make them better at school, at science, at different things, right? Does that answer that question, Laris? Does that help you? Oh. Thank you very much. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. There you are, thank you, thank you. Um, I, I know we only have a few minutes here. I thought it might be good to, um, uh, there were some real practical questions, Jacob, that were in there, maybe. Yeah, one of, the, one of the questions I saw that's a pretty easy answer to is, um, is it okay to ask directly for a donation? And if so, what's the best way to do this? And, you know, the, the best way, you know, we've talked about inviting people to participate in the story. So it, it's okay to invite people to participate in the story. But when we're making an ask, we want to go back to our action verbs, right? And we want to actually make a direct ask. It's much more effective to have a specific action item or a call to action rather than a, a kind of a vague invitation to maybe participate somehow, some way. Um, so Alice, do you think that's probably the best way to go about okay. asking for a donation is just kind of being upfront and, and direct about yeah. it? People, again, we go back to our wants and needs. 
You know, we are sharing our wants and needs. So when you share a story that has data points, 40% of the youth that participate in our clubs uh, have improved grades. And that is because of the programs that we do. And those are directly supported by people like you. When you share the story of it, and then you can say that, and we need your help. This is what we need. And we want you to be involved because we want this success together. Again, you're speaking to their wants and their needs, um, that higher level for them. They wanna be part of something great. They wanna be uh, serving something great. So uh, like Astrid was talking about, about the science program, boy, sharing that story about the, the recipe and the ink, and this is how our kids use this, and this is why this is important. And the only way we can do this is because of you, is because of people like you supporting us. That is, and we need, we need this much money to do this program. People want to know. They, you know, we talked uh, before about our brains wanting to survive and thrive and how our brains get rid of information um, that doesn't apply to them, right? Um, we talked about that dopamine loop <laughs> that our brain is on, this constant feedback of dopamine that if it applies to me, it, it goes into the cycle, right? Um, so you have to make it apply to them. So do not be afraid to tell them, this is what we need and I want you to be involved. And we need this and we want this to accomplish that. We, we need this much. You've got to make a direct uh, uh, ask. When, when you share that story, you've already painted a picture for them. So they, their brains are connected. Their heart is connected um, to those things. There's universal things they can relate to, the specific things they've started to care. And you share with them, it's a call to action, that direct call. Nobody, if you were in a store, you wouldn't hide the cash register. I got, I've, I've got my clothes. I'm ready. I picked out the perfect outfit for my son's graduation and I'm headed to the exit. Well, how do I pay? How do I, I want this dress. How do I pay, right? You wouldn't hide the cash register. So don't hide the cash register. All right. Um, so we are getting down to our last few minutes here. And so I just wanted to share with everyone kind of uh, what's next. And, you know, as always, we like to send some follow-up communication to the group, uh, just a kind of a, a survey to understand how you liked it, what we could do better. You know, we're always trying to give you, again, the best content possible. Uh, so please look for that. And again, we will also be sharing uh, the, the link for this so that you could watch it again or share it with anyone in your network that wants to just get a little bit uh, better at their storytelling. Our next webcast will be April 28th, so save the date. Uh, more communication about that will be coming out. Um, and also a good segue into our Promise Awards, right? Our Promise Awards is the opportunity for our affiliates to tell stories. And this is it. So take what you've learned today, take what you learned at the conference, watch this again, use some of the resources to get out there and share with us all of the amazing things that you're doing that your youth are doing. Um, so please be on the lookout for more Promise Awards information coming. And of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Uh, the best way would be the admin at wfyc.org email address. Um, Alice, do you have anything that you want to share with the group? Any parting words or of course, anything that you want to plug? Well, I just want to thank everyone. Uh, and uh, if there are questions that didn't get answered, we'll, we'll send those out in email form. Uh, I appreciate you all so much. Um, I'm so thrilled to be part of the work that you're doing. Um, and just so if, if you are following me at alicefairfax.com um, or need to get in touch with me or find out more, you can follow me there or on Instagram at Alice Fairfax. Um, and in the next year, I've written a book on um, how to tell your story. And so want to get these tools into your hands. So you can look for that in the next year. Um, that'll be coming out. And hopefully that will help you um, not only tell your story, but uh, in the presentation of your story as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It was a tremendous pleasure having you again. 
Uh, we were glad to be able to just take a, a bit more of a deep dive into some of the topics you shared with us at our conference a few weeks ago. Uh, thank you so much for being a friend and being a terrific storyteller and for sharing your secrets with our affiliate network. Uh, thank you to everyone that joined us today. Again, please be on the lookout for some of the follow-up communication. And we can't wait to celebrate another wonderful webcast session with you again in a month's time. Thank you so much.